What is up, everybody? Happy Tuesday to you. So, Amber Rose spoke at the RNC. Um, this, I believe this happened yesterday, right? And Amber Rose has been getting mixed reviews because she has decided to jump on the MAGA train. And from what I understand about Amber Rose, she is American, but I think one of her parents is South African. I think she's biracial. She was born in Philadelphia to Dorothy Rose and mm -hmm. Michael Levin, Chuck, right? Her father is of Irish and Italian descent, and her mother is of Cape Verdean and maternal Scottish descent from Ayrshire. She has one brother named Antonio Hewlett. Amber Rose grew up in South Philadelphia. Okay, so she's American. Um, she claimed that her father served in the military. She He was a serviceman for, for I believe she said, 25 years years maybe um and from what i see um she's not black american descent um someone even told me that she was south african but she is american she she it looks like she was born in philadelphia she is american she was born on american soil um and it looks like, you know, her family descent is being noted, but it's not very clear if they were immigrants or not. She seems like an Elon Musk to me, right? They are the real, they are the real African-Americans when you think about it. If they came from Africa, Elon is African-American to me. All right, but anyways, Amber spoke at the RNC last night and it's interesting because Amber can't get a break, right? Obviously, the Democratic positions who have actually propped her debauchery, right? They're feeling slighted and betrayed because she has gone on over to the Republican um, plantation. And now she is a Trump supporter, right? And she does this speech at the RNC last night, and you have Republicans like Matt Walsh from the Daily Wire, right? Who is not very happy with the fact that Amber Rose was given this platform and this time to speak. So he says the RNC gives a prime time speaking slide. This is what he tweets on Twitter about 16 hours ago. The RNC gives a prime time speaking slot to a pro-abortion feminist and self-proclaimed slut with a face tattoo whose only claim to fame is having sex with rappers. Truly an embarrassment. Not a single voter will be mobilized by this person. Now, Matt Walsh is just judging Amber Rose at her face value, what she does, who she chooses to be, right? He's not really focusing on the fact that she has a political position and it happens to be on the side of Trump like he may have, right? No, he's just looking at the person that she is, who she chooses to be. Now, granted, I don't agree with people like Ann Burroughs, that select culture, but I do believe that people have a right, no matter how they choose to live, to have a position about almost anything that's not related to how they live. And so that goes for political positions as well. I know sluts that have a political position. I know people sluts who don't have a political position. I know sluts who are clueless about political positions. You know, I don't think just because you choose to live a lifestyle that at some, that, that somehow that lifestyle, you know, shuts your senses off from prag other pragmatic aspects of life and topics. So, you know, here Matt Walsh is demonizing this woman, slut shaming this woman, you know, because she was allowed to speak at the RNC. And this is the types of things that I'm talking about right here, because, you know, you have your Candace Owens and your Brandon Tatum's, you know, you have the black side control opposition on the Republican side, but you also have these white 
looking control oppositions on the Republican side. And their mission is to act like they want to rally people over to the Republican side or the Republican position, but really they're trying to gatekeep it. And they're really trying to alienate a certain type of person or demographic from that particular position. This is why Republicans always have a hard time diversifying their base. And the, the reason why Democrats are always able to appear as though they are the party of diversity, because you have control opposition on even the Republican side, who is inhibiting people from wanting to be have anything to do with the Republican Party, even if they make a decision on their own to be involved with the Republican Party, you know, these people, you know, find a way to vilify them. So I was curious as to how Amber Rose presented after hearing about this tweet, reading this tweet is right in front of my face. So I look at the video that he attached to it. And so it's the video uh, is about my entire- um, this is a Fox News presentation broadcast. So just fair usage. I'm just commentating on this particular delivery of Amber Rose and why I think that Matt Walsh was out of pocket and he was just really revealing a lot of his inner bigotry. Um, I, I definitely feel that way. So here we go. Entire family is racially diverse. And I believe the left wing propaganda that Donald Trump was a racist. My father said- So I'm not going to go through all the stuff that she said. She starts off her speech by saying, you know, setting up why she had one opinion about Donald Trump and why through her own research, she was able to change her position at the encouragement of her father, who is a veteran, right? Now, presentation wise, you know, no matter if Amber Rose bought into select culture, I will say that Amber Rose looks presentable for that occasion. She is not dressed inappropriately and she looks modest. Yes, she has a face tattoo, but again, she looks great. Like, honestly, you know, even I I have tattoos, right? But even with tattoos, I mean, people have their opinions about them, you know, whatever, you know, everybody has a right to feel how they feel about anything, Right. But even I would never get a face tattoo. Right. You know, I like, you know, my tattoos to have rhetoric and they do, you know, but, you know, even with her having a face tattoo that really, to me, doesn't clout what she's saying. She actually is presenting very well. She's very articulate. And honestly, she's not even giving slut. She's not even giving slut in this presentation. So I just want you to hear and check out her um, her her uh, speech, you know, at the RNC so that you can judge for yourself. But I don't see somebody who's even presenting like a slut. She's presenting like a person who has a political position and opinion, and she is justifying that in this speech. Father said, no, he's not, Amber. What are you talking about? This is where I belong. <laughs> Right, so I just want you to hear her talk. She's not, and again, she's not gyrating. She's not doing anything funny. She's so very I let go of my fear of judgment, of being misunderstood, of getting attacked by the left, very and put the red hat on too. Right, and she's justifying her position. Right, but there's nothing about her that gives slut in this Love presentation. I never felt more free and more love for my country than I do now. So she is really coming from not the Amber Rose, the motto, the woman that has been in tranche with black rappers or anything like that. She's really coming from a person that I'm an American. You know, I am looking at what's happening to this country. I exist in this country. I was born in this country. I don't like the pathway of this country. I'm speaking straight from that lens. And it's just amazing how hard he went in on her, Matt Walsh from the Daily Wire, for just having a political opinion. And that's the gatekeeping type of stuff that really, and a nepotism, if you will, that really inhibits so many people in America from really getting ahead, having a view, having a voice, because you have these narcissistic, you know, holier than thou type of apostates like Matt Walsh 
demonizing this woman for having a position, right? And, you know, it's ridiculous because it's the, her position happens to be the same position that he may have, right? So regardless if this is a person who presents themselves, you know, as a slut or, you know, pro-abortionist and a feminist, right? You know, she is still you know, voicing her opinions about Donald Trump and why she changed her opinions. So I have always said that the Republican Party does a great job, their pundits do a great job of alienating, you know, diverse perspective, you know, voters and, and even individuals to that base because of their bigotry, because of their just self-righteous idealism about their apostasy. A lot of these people are apostates on the Republican side. A lot of them have so much hate in their heart, which is not a fruitage of the spirit. And they will sit there and call themselves trying to be judgmental on somebody. Even if you did everything right in your life, if you were pushing apostasy, if you were pushing any type of demonism or divisive hatred type of rhetoric or whatnot in your little soft covert ways, right? You're not holier than anybody. But anyways, you guys have a wonderful day. You know, I I don't really, I'm not advocating or endorsing any of these political candidates, but I respect a person who says I have this political position because of X, Y, and Z. I've done my research this is what makes sense for my personal situation, right? This makes sense for me, right? There are a lot of people who are voting for Trump because they care about their money. They care about their money. They are not caring about all this other politics stuff. They care about the policies and they believe that Trump's policies will benefit them and their family economically. And that is why <clears throat> they are siding with Trump, not because you know, they are in love or worship Trump. It's just that they care about their money and they're working too hard for it. And they're seeing it being short squeezed every little creative way. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. I will catch you on the next one. Enjoy me while you can, because again, at the end of August, the hustle is going to be real and I'm not going to really have a lot of time to do what I'm doing now. So you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.